Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with John Meyerhofer, who is the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library's Director of Information Services. But not only directing our information services, John is the architect of our wonderful new website that we're very excited to share with you and to give you a first sneak peek at today. In fact, you're among the first people to see this outside of uh, the Himmel's, Himmel's doors. So welcome, John. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, had, it's, had, what's that? Go ahead, Tim. I said you have had months of discussion, months of, of editing, and countless conversations with getting this ready. And you must be very excited to share it with people as well. I really am. It's uh, it's been a long time of um, work, a lot of work, and a long time. Um, it's um, from meeting with the curators uh, to other scholars to talk about kind of what the new website should, what should it should have um, to meeting with um, other people, uh, including, um, you know, some of the other staff to talk about branding and, and, and the look of the website um, to even uh, just the, all the Himmel staff helping us refine the website and make it even better. It's, it's, I am, I'm very excited to uh, kind of finally show it off and, and uh, get it out the door. I'm sure you are. You're probably very excited to be working on a different project pretty soon, too. <laughs> this has dominated everything for you, I'm sure. <laughs> As so these well, will often do, yes. Yeah, well, let's get started. I'm anxious to see some of the things myself, because even I haven't perused the new website fully. Um, as like other like like people who are working on it have been doing. So what, primarily, what is the difference between the old site and the new site, John? So I think um, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of differences that I think um, most people will um, notice. But the primary one for me is um, the, the couple ones. There's the navigation, how you navigate the site, how you you get around the site. Um, but also just kind of the general look of the site. So here you can see I've pulled up the old um, site. And um, when you think about navigation, you think about how users navigate the site. And, and typically that's this kind of menu at the top. Mm -hmm. um, and the existing Himmel website um, has this simple um, kind of three word phrase um, to be able to navigate the site. Um, and unless you're, you know, adapted enough to, to find the hamburger menu, they call it over here to the left, to bring up these more options, most users struggled, um, and we heard this from a lot of our scholars, um, uh, most users struggled to find uh, the things they wanted to on the site, you know, people or places, people in manuscript, that's, those are interesting words and in, in an interesting way to think about how well, the work that Himmel does, but when you're navigating a website, you need to be um, you need to use terms and words that help users um, find the information that they need. We 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 don't want to or we try not to um, hide information from them, so making it hard for them to navigate the site. Yeah, um, hidden in, hidden information is a challenge when you're trying to find something that you want really to. Is. This this site has served us since 2017, and some of the information is hard to get to. It's a beautiful site, and it's very visual, but it's time to change the navigation and to make it easier for people. So why don't you talk to a little bit? Well, actually, show us. Yes, I will show you. For, yes. We're navigating. Yes. So if you, you know, the existing navigation on this site was structured that way. So this, if you look, um, this is the new website. So this is the main landing page. And uh, right at the top, as far as the navigation goes, you, you get many more options. And the words uh, that we're using and we're choosing to use are much more um, akin to what other libraries and other museums are using to describe the things that they do. So if you think about our collections, the things that we have, the research that we do, this was a, a big area that a lot of scholars struggled to find information on our existing website just because that that information was a little bit hard to find. Uh, we're, we, we moved into highlighting the programs that we offer, both public and scholarly programs, hoping to make it easier for, um, you know, scholarly people to find programs that we offer, but also general public um, programs. We've um, rebranded, in a sense, um, our news or a blog feature in, uh, to be stories. We're, we're really trying to move into uh, a way, uh, 
a future where we start telling the story of Himmel's work and the, and the work that Himmel's staff and in the people we work with. Um, and then just a general about section, and then we've added a support menu. Uh, this was a, um, these were pages and content that just really wasn't existent on the current website or was very, very, very hard to find, only um, available by search. Mm -hmm. um, so we really ho are hoping that this, this new um, navigation menu will help users um, find the information they need uh, much more quickly and be able to browse uh, for it. The other, the other thing that we did was rather than just um, give people or give users options to just uh, pages, we wanted to also kind of seed or, or give users um, a little taste of what they might get when they, they go into uh, a page. So for example, here under the collections menu, we've highlighted the Western European manuscripts here with a, a, a subtle manuscript in the background, but also giving people a little short description of what they might um, might find on that page. The other place where we do that is is under these uh, the stories, where we give users an option to get to the latest stories or all of the stories that we offer, but also the most recent story. We kind of give them an idea of of something that they might see or 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 get to by clicking on these other menus. It's very nice to be able to, to kind of get the most current stuff up front instead of having to dig through everything else all the way through. Could you go into the collections page once again? Sure. I'd like sure. to see what happens when I want, if I want to dig out down deeper, what happens when I hit learn more for like Western manuscripts? So that will take you to the Western European manuscript page. Um, and that page has been specifically designed uh, with a, a new look, and I, I think that that's that other thing that you're going to notice um, as you navigate the site is that the site looks much different um, from the existing site as far as how the look, um, how it looks. And, and we did that strategically. We, we made that choice um, knowing that um, current web resources, research as far as how users are using websites. Many uh, users nowadays don't, they don't read big blocks of text. They don't, um, they don't like to, a big wall of images. They, they like things to have a little bit more reading room, breathing room, and they also like bullets and headlines or headers and, and those things to help break up the content. So one example of that on the old website that um, I was thinking I might highlight today is the, uh, if you go to say the Malta Study Center or Malta uh, Collections page. So, this is the old existing website, and you can see what I'm talking about here. Where the the image is, is goes all the way to the edge of the screen. It takes up half of the um, the screen, and it it doesn't really allow people to 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 get a sense of what that image is. It, it's taking up too much of the screen. The other side, on the other side, we've got this kind of wall of text um, that requires a user to essentially read all of the text in order to glean some information about the Malta collection or the Malta study center. Um, so what we've done, if we compare that to the um, Malta manuscripts page on the new website, is we've, we've given the images, we've reassessed all of the images on the new site for, um, for a start, but we've also yeah. given those images a little bit breathing room. We've given them captions so that people can understand and, and know the context of those images. But with the text, rather than just have kind of a, a big paragraph after paragraph of text, we've broken that content into bullets or into um, having headers um, so that people can quickly scan and find the information they want and then read deeper if they want. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can hear at the bottom, we've, we've got these nice headers that break the content a little bit more uh, cleanly so that people can quickly scan and get to the information that they want. It really allows me, the user, to narrow in more quickly on something that I want to find or even just to kind of get rid of things that might not be pertaining to my search at that point in time. So very nicely done. The look is so fresh and very clean and, and the amount of white space you have around really helps the reader understand what's taking place as well. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the one conscious thing we did was uh, move from the, um, the more um, heavy black that's mm -hmm. traditionally, that was traditionally used with the webs, the old website 
and go to that kind of cleaner um, white white space that gives things a little bit more breathing room. Now, if we scroll to the bottom, you can see that we've utilized that kind of heavy black for the um, the, the footer menu. Um, still, still um, a little bit of a, 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 a you know a shine back to that, but but we're, we were hoping for a much more clean navigable site where people can quickly kind of see things. Well, I think you've been very successful. It has that nice, fresh, crisp feel as well. And we're also getting a little sneak peek at the new Himmel logo up in the left-hand corner yeah, as well. Yes, we are. Which is B as well, too. So, <laughs> now, I'm sure that as you were working on this, you kind of had parts that you really thought this is going to be exciting and new for people to see. So what are some of the new features that you're excited about that are new to the, the, the new Himmel website that maybe weren't on the old website? Yeah, definitely. So I, I, I will have to say that so along with this change, we didn't just update kind of the look or, or where, you know, how the pages are structured. We this is kind of a, a restructure of the back end um, yeah. system architecture as well. So the uh, old website was using a, a more traditional kind of confining CMS or content management system, whereas this new system allows us to generate pa pages. Um, much more dynamically um, so that we can create pages that have images on the right or on the left or um, have text here or bullets there. So we have a lot more freedom with this, this architecture. So I think I'm very excited about that. And I think Himmel staff are too. We, we really felt the old site was starting to feel constraining in the content that it could do. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 there's a, a bunch of new um, pages that we were able to add because of that change. Um, but one that I'm particularly excited about is, um, is or are the repository list pages. Um, now, the repository list pages give scholars the ability to find out where Himmel's work, where, where we've digitized, what libraries have we worked at, e even from all the way back in 1965, where, where, what type of materials does Himmel have? Mm -hmm. um, and so you can see that users can just search for a repository they can browse by collection and these are broken up by those same collections that we have uh, the himmel collections or we allow users to browse kind of by country and this will allow users to to kind of get to the resources they want we we, were, we strove for uh, multiple kind of um, avenues or multiple ways into um, the materials or to this information about repositories. So if, if I was a scholar, for example, and I was interested in the repositories in Spain, I could click on that and I would be able to search the Spain repositories, but I'd also be able to just get a list of all of the repositories where Himmel has worked. So you can see there's you know, quite a yeah. few. And so if, for example, a scholar was interested in the one in uh, Montserrat, they could click on that and each repository page, each repository, excuse me, has its own page. And the curators have worked extremely hard to generate this content because this content wasn't available, even though it, it should have been available to our users. This content was always, typically scholars would have to email a curator and say, well, what do you have at the Montserrat? Bibliotheca. What materials? What you know? What type of scanning did you do? Whether it was microfilm or was digital scanning, but now the curators have generated this content in such a way where we can pull that into a page for each of the repositories that we've um, worked at, and you can see that on this page we've got a nice short description, and a scholar could really find out if they want to come and visit Himmel or yeah. if uh, they want to go and view these materials on our um, online platform, Himmel Reading Room. Um, but the, the additional thing, and this gets a little bit to the um, kind of the architecture underneath the, um, the repositories page and the website, is that when, um, when a scholar searches, they can see all of the, um, they can search for a country, say, but mm -hmm. they can also search for a specific repository if they know it. And again, I can click directly right into that repository page. But the additional thing that we've allowed uh, our curators to do is, is give a longer description if, if, if it's desired or if it's needed for these um, repositories, because some of these repositories 
are very, very large, and we've got a lot of materials for them. So breaking down detailed information about some of the materials that we have and um, the, the organization or the structure of some of those materials really gets at the, the things that the scholars were, they needed to know in order to, to be able to study or apply for a fellowship at um, Himmel. So I think both scholars will really, really appreciate this um, new feature, but also curators. This mm -hmm. in the long run will save curators time. They won't have to be answering these emails from scholars, constantly asking them what types of materials we have, but instead be able to use the, the website, the new website to find um, that information. And very importantly, scholars won't have to wait for our curators to get back to them either they'll go right away too. So not that, not, that they're, not that they're bad at getting back to them, but it just, it takes off that time as well. That's so. right. They're busy people too. <laughs> Although I know the curators have worked hard to make this information available, which is, we're, we're so thankful for that, their work and effort on their, and their expertise. So what else do you have to share? What other new features are, 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 are lurking behind all those? <laughs> so uh, one one feature that I'm pretty excited about as well are the um, the global operations pages. Yes. And these are pages um, that really give the public a sense of all of the global locations where we work. So you can see here we've got kind of a nice visual overview of all of the the locations and countries where we work, mm -hmm. and if you want to find out more about a specific site, you can click into that. Um, so if I was interested in, in the Mali location, I can click into there. And here again, you can see an example of how we tried to structure the content, not, not just in a paragraph of text explaining the region and the country and the cities and so on, but we really wanted to kind of give them that ability, users to, to quickly scan that information and find out what were, your, what were the partners on this project. What are the cities that we worked on? But also, again, this is a, a little bit more to that general public instead of the, the previous feature, the repositories list I was pointing, that was very bare bones and to the detail. That was meant for scholars and that was um, filling a need that they needed. Here, this is a bit more for the general public. We've got some nice images on the left-hand side with some descriptions. Well, excuse me, well, users can find out more about that site and the work that we did do there. I really appreciate how you get to a sense of the people involved in all this as well as you look at this. I know Dr. Melissa Morton, who sadly doesn't work with us anymore, had a big role in playing and making this happen and the research and the interesting topics and information that she came out with is really wonderful. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. great to see that uh, up there available. Yeah, yes, it's a very exciting kind of new feature in this, much like the curators doing the work for the repositories page, they and all of our staff really helped us um, figuring, figure out the, the locations we needed to highlight, but also all of the details about the languages and, and finding images that really did try to tell that story about the people who were, are working in these sites and, and try to tell the story of Himmel and the work that we've been doing. Yeah, adding a personal face and a human face is, is very important to all this work because it's, that's the story that we're telling. The written records you know, record the story of people, which is so much, which is, which is wonderful. Now, speaking of you know, stories, Himmel itself has quite a story as well. And for one of the first times, we're going to have a really nice kind of understanding of the, the history of Himmel. I know Dr. Heinzelman put a lot of work into the history of our or where we come from. So let's take a look at that for a second. Yes, and this is another exciting new feature, I think, Tim, yeah. because it, the history has always been this thing that um, was hidden or, or wasn't fully fleshed out. And we finally yeah. got at least a, a, you know, it's not a, a, a novel or extreme in-depth over um, a, a history, but this history, new history page under the About menu really breaks down and tells helps tell the history, the story of Himmel and all of the things and all of the places and all the people that have been involved in, in these projects from Ethiopia all the way to Malta to, to Germany. Um, it's, it's an exciting thing to see. And especially again here, we've got, we have some wonderful old pictures. Uh, um, this one shows the groundbreaking of the new, um, the new Alcuin Library where Himmel is, is, is located. Um, here you can see a nice aerial view of that. So um, the history page, again, it really helps tell that story about the work that we do and, and the longevity of Himmel and um, 
all, all of the places that we've worked at and all of the things that we've been involved in from from CD-ROMs to, to now digital archiving in um, around the world. We, we've, we, um, here you can see a nice example of a studio, um, yes. but it, it's, um, it, it's, I, I think a lot of people will appreciate this page and, and spend some time uh, reading through um, these descriptions to, to learn more about all the work that we've, we've done throughout time. Yeah, even as someone who's worked here for almost 17 years now, there is information that I don't even know about, and it's fun to get a sense of that project, you know, how it's how it's how it's taken place over the years since the 1960s. Yeah. And what I'm what I'm also seeing here is a lot of people, and mm -hmm. another good thing about our new website is you get to know us a little bit. I I know we're featured on that about page too. You can kind of get a sense of the the global nature of our staff if you go up and show us the staff. Page yes, there. I will. Yes, the staff. Really? Yeah, in traditionally in the old site, um, we just had kind of a list, just our names and titles. Um, um, but with the new site, we really wanted to think about how we could highlight the um, the staff and and the global nature of our staff. I think we really are a unique institution in in that we we really do have people working around the world, mm -hmm. not just digitizing manuscripts, but cataloging and 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 um, helping us um, with our field operations. So here you can. We've got it kind of broken down by um, departments a little bit, but we um, we're excited to offer these these pages that kind of allow you to to meet these people. And I won't um, I won't select anybody on purpose except myself here. So or maybe I guess like Tim, <laughs> but each each person then gets a little bio page um, where you're able to contact them, learn a little bit more about them. Um, and each person was able to kind of give a quote. Um, that to to give a sense of um their job or the work that they're doing yeah it's a wonderful new addition and again it puts that human face on the work that we do and you know people are a very important part of all of this and i know john that you are our architect and you truly led the way on this new website and it is exciting it's fresh it's new and it's simple, it's understandable. But I know you, you had some very important partners that helped you as well. Who would you like to thank as we, as we look at this big project? Because it had to be just overwhelming. Yes, yeah, it, like I said, um, I think at the beginning, it, it was a long project and it was very intense. Um, but in particular, um, uh, Shelly Regan was very instrumental in helping with um, the website, Dr. Melissa Morton. Both of those were, our, was, were my core website team and so, uh, we would meet um, almost every day and working on the site, uh, thinking about how we were going to re-architect things and design things and and uh, how the display might work or how the images and um, which images to choose too. So they were both very instrumental. But I, I would say that across the board, the whole Himmel staff has been instrumental, um, you know, from from initial concepts, thinking about how the repository page might be designed, for example, or or thinking about um, adding programs, um, but helping up with the content, finding images, to testing the site, um, figuring out the details, um, adding the history, as as you said, um, um, Matt was able to do. With, um, but there there was players that, of course, have always added have a little bit more institutional knowledge so they are able to give a little bit more contact especially you know father columbus stewart and and uh wayne torberg and and matt heitzman i think just by the nature of their longevity here at himmel they they have a lot of institutional knowledge and so but it really was a a, a concerted effort by all the himmel staff especially during testing we set up a facility where they could um, find bugs or they could offer suggestions and, we, and they would submit those and and we, we got lots of things that um, helped make the site even better. Yeah, it, like I said, it's, it's an amazing upgrade from what we had before. And very few places are able to create this in-house. And we can create this in-house really because of your expertise and your knowledge of programming and, and the coding that has to go into something like this. I might be able to tell you a period is wrong, but I'll tell you, I can't make <laughs> that, that page come to life on the screen. So when will this become live for the public? So it's live October, Monday, October 5th is when we're officially launching the new website. Um, oh. And again, like you had said, the new logo is going to be launched at the same time. So we're very excited about kind of all of these pieces that we've been working on from 
uh, the, all of the staff, um, they're finally coming to fruition and um, we're excited to finally show them to the public. Very much so, and we are excited to have you, the public, be able to have a much easier access to our information and be able to navigate cleanly on our site and to learn more about the work that we do here and around the world with partners across all over the place. So, John, thank you so much for all the work you put into this. It's so exciting to see this come to life and even more exciting to hear the comments and the accolades that are going to come when people, once people start using it because they'll yes, be able to find yes. all kinds of things. So, yes, thank yes. you very well, much. I, yeah, I, I thank you, Tim. And um, I, I'm excited. I was excited to kind of give the sneak peek today because I, I am excited about this website. So I, I look forward to people using it. Great. I feel like you have a bottle of champagne to, to hit on the screen or something to launch it, but it's great to be done. So thank you again. And thank you for joining us today. And I hope you enjoy exploring the new Himmel website. Thanks everyone. Yep. Bye now.